Frosting, what's his name? He played a, he played a, uh, he played a uh, 007. Pierce Brosnan, I can't think of his name, but anyway. Pierce Brosnan played in 007. 007 was also played by Sean Connery. Sean Connery played in Hunt for Red October. And Hunt for Red October is about the Department of the Navy. And Kevin Bacon played a Marine who was the Department of the Navy in A Few Good Men. I suck at it. There's, there's a whole lot better people that can do it than less than that. But, but it's just basically what? It's, it's, it's probability of finding something in common with somebody else. Just like one of the reasons I give you all my information sheet is because a long time ago I got you all to fill out an index card and I had to put six categories up on the board. And you all would fill in six categories. One was favorite color. One was the day, uh, month you were born. One is where did you go to high school. Uh, the other one is, are you married, and do you have kids? And you would fill those five things out, or your favorite movie, or I would just do different things. And I would pass the cards out, you would write those things down according to you, and then I would take them up, and I would pass them out where you didn't have yours, but you had somebody else's. And we would read them out loud with no names, and then we would try to figure out who was the person that wrote down the things. And the whole purpose of the little exercise is to show that everybody has something in common. Whether it's the favorite color, whether it's your birthday, same month, whether you went to the same high school, everybody has something in common. Whether we all have brown eyes, brown eyes are the best color, I think. Is that what y'all think? Brown eyes? That's a joke, but anyway, y'all aren't going to laugh. All right. Kevin Bacon, try another one. That was a hard one. Because there's nobody in taken except Liam Neeson. He's the only star. That's why I chose that one. Pierce Brosnan. Do y'all know who I'm talking about? Uh, the guy who plays in Footloose, right? No, that's Kevin Bacon. Yeah, yeah, that's why he's... Pierce Brosnan is the guy that played in 007. He's a black-headed guy. He's got a British accent. Yeah, he also plays um, the lion in... Yeah. Whatever the name of that movie is. And He's played in a lot of a lot of other movies, but he played the you know, opposite of Liam Neeson. I can't even pronounce his name. Liam Neeson. Mm -hmm. Liam Neeson was a Confederate soldier, officer, and he was chasing Pierce Brosnan. Pierce Brosnan was a Union soldier, and they were, he was chasing him for war crimes. And the whole movie was about them chasing each other. It was a good movie. But anyway, he played in that. Pierce Frost in 007. 007 played Sean Connery. Sean Connery played him in the 60s. And Sean Connery played in Hunt for Red October, which was about the Department of the Navy. And Kevin Bacon was an employee of the Department of the Navy because he played a Marine in A Few Good Men. The Marine J Jag. J Judge Adjutant General, whatever you call it. So name, give, me a, give me an actress. Sandra Bullock. Hmm. I'm trying to think of Sandra Bullock movies. I know all of them. And then I'm trying to think of Kevin Bacon. Sandra Bullock played in a... Sandra Bullock played in a movie with Keanu Reeves. What was it called? Speed. All right. Keanu Reeves played in The Matrix. Okay. The Matrix, which involved Lawrence Fishburne, right? That had his name. Lawrence Fishburne played in a played in The Matrix, but he also played. Uh, that was darn. That was the other guy. 
Samuel Jackson thing. I went into a dead end there. I was stuck in Samuel Jackson. So yeah, I suck at it. You have to, you have to, you have to play it a lot to get at. I'll have to. Uh, let's see if we can find something on the web. About it. <laughs> I think it's an interesting game. I just don't ever get to play it. As you can tell, I suck at it. So you can go on Google. Six degrees separation. Kevin Bacon. Let's see, Kevin Bacon and Sandra Bullock. Well, you just have to look it up. Sandra Bullock. There it is. Dennis Hopper. I knew it was speed somewhere. Dennis Hopper played in speed. And Dennis Hopper played in a uh, movie with uh, what you call it. But anyway, here we go. Where'd it go? There we go. No, not that one. Dennis Harper. Where'd it go? Well, here's one. Sandra Bullock played with Nicole Kidman in Practical Magic. You know what the two sisters are, are? That was a good movie. The two sisters are witches. And Nicole Kidman played with Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise played with Rob Lowe in The Outsiders. Rob Lowe played with Sally Fields, brother and sisters. Sally Fields played with Julia Roberts and Steel Magnolias. And, that. and Julia and Kevin in Sleepers, which was a horror movie. You got to know your movies, too. Natalie Portman. I don't know what this That was somebody else. I was wanting to see, but this is a whole page of this is a whole page of, of uh, Kevin Bacon. I was wanting to see Sandra Bullock. Why can't I? I don't know why it's not showing that. It's one. probably like down further, where it could have been taken off, but that's still. There it is. Audrey Hepburn to Kevin Bacon. Judy Garland. Mickey, no, that's, that's way over my head. But it's just, like I said, it's a game you play. And I don't know if you want to play it or not, but it's, it's, all, about, it's all about probabilities. It's all about it. I thought they had a, I thought they had a, a database where you could put just one name in it and it would play it. But you, you just you put the word in the little box like uh, Sandra Bullock and it would put the six degrees of separation. But oh well. Okay, let's see if you can do this one. Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt played with Thelma Louise with Gina Davis, who played the League of Their Own with Tom Hanks, who played Apollo 13 with Tom Hanks. I mean, with Kevin Bacon. So, you could do those all day long. Can't believe y'all never heard of it before. It's your parents' fault. All right. Now you remember it. Talk about parameter and statistic. Okay, write this one down. This is a test question. Quantitative versus qualitative. Why do they call it categorical? Categorical. Mm -hmm. Because they're trying to confuse you. Uh, what's the old saying? Quality instead of what? Quantity. Quantity. And that's what this is. Quality is how something is made. Quantity is how much of it's made. Quantity is numbers. Quality is not numbers. So blondes, brunettes, and redheads in the classroom. 
that would be qualitative. Average weights, average heights, average ages, that would be quantitative because it has to do with numbers. That's pretty self-explanatory. Okay? I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, but that is a test question, so make sure you know it. There's quantitative data, age. Uh, quantitative political party. That's quantitative. Okay, let's talk about discrete and continuous. Now, the reason I want to talk about this, this is an important question, and it's one of the easiest questions on your test, but y'all get it wrong. And I don't know how to fix it. I, I've tried to explain it the easiest way that I can, but most of the time people miss it because I wasn't in class the day I went over the lecture. That's most of the Oh, one guy last semester missed it on the final exam. I said, you don't remember us talking about the tree? Oh, my God, I was there that day. Duh. So, let's talk about it. Now, in order to talk about discrete and continuous, i got to go back to high school and go over something else you didn't know anything about. Continuous is like your irrational numbers. And discrete is like irrational. Now, if I was to ask you what your irrational and rational number was back in high school, you'd all sit there and go, I have no clue. Most of you, except for the people that would go, oh, yes, irrational means non predictable, and rational means predictable. If I give you some numbers like this, square root of 7, square root of 2, get your calculators out, and pi. Get your calculators out and tell me what those three numbers are. I'll write them down for you. Square root of 7. And I want all 10 digits. I think most of your calculators go to 10 digits. What's the square root of seven? Go slow. Now I ain't no. I can't. I don't. Two point six four five seven five one three one one. Okay, somebody can take the square root of two. Give that to me. One four one four two one three five six two. And what is pi? We'll keep going. I want to know the whole thing. Two, six, five, four. Oh, right here? Yeah. Two, it's six. It's actually nine, two. Nine, two. And then six, five, four. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Let me just redo it. Three point what? One, four. One, five, nine, two. Really? Okay, well. Touch that thing up there. Yeah, it's done locked down. There's something wrong with this system. It's always done it before. I have to write it with the mouse now. I've now some stuff. <laughs> Thank you. It's a joke. 3.15. Now let's see if it'll work now. Now that I unstuck it. 15. Nine. No. I have to write it. Let me try one more thing.
Nope, let's do it. One five. Nine two. Nine two. Six five. Four. Six five. Four. Mm -hmm. All right. I want everybody to look at this blank. Here, here, and here. Tell me what the next number is on all three of those numbers. Can you tell me? Why? Why can't you tell me what the next number is? There's no what? There's no pattern. Does everybody see that? There's no pattern. There's no predictability. It's all over the place. Think of another word. All over the place. It varies. In other words, you cannot predict this next digit based on what you see here. So it's ambiguous. Rational. All right, punch these in. You don't have to because they're pretty easy. Okay, what's one half? Can you tell me what that next digit is? Zero. How about two thirds? So you can tell me what that next digit is? And four over two. two. And you can tell me what the next digit is. So do you have predictability with rational numbers? Yes. Is it more solid? Yes. Okay. So discrete means solid. Continuous means not solid, means not predictable. Still won't tell us nothing. Either. Let me give you an example. Let's say that I told each, I, I brought in a box of measuring devices. Some of them were tapes you pull, you know, like a tape measure a builder uses. Some are range finders where you shoot it to that wall and it shoots an infrared beam back. Or some of them are just cloth tapes. Some of them are yardsticks. Some of them are uh, the old, you ever seen old carpenter's um, ruler that flips, the old wooden carpenter's ruler? Okay, well, some of them, that's a ruler. Okay, anyway, it's before the things that you pull out. It's before that. And I tell each one of y'all to come up here, pick the, out of the box, pick the whatever device you want to use, and you don't have to look, but there's a fire hydrant right down there. Right there beside the sidewalk. Okay? And I tell each one of you to go down there and measure that fire hydrant. The height of that fire hydrant. How many of you would agree on the same height? Y'all would give me eight different measurements. Why? Well, three of you out of eight don't know how to read a, a, a measure, uh, measuring device. Don't know how to read a ruler. Because that's about a third. A third of the students who graduate high school do not know how to read a ruler. All right, so you just say seven, you'd say uh, 27 inches. You would give me the fraction. So three of you would give me 27 inches. Okay, what about the other six or seven or five? What, what would y'all do? Well, five of you, uh, three of you would read the little marks and you would read, one of you would read a big mark, one of you would read a little mark, the other one would go down or round up. So there would be three different measurements there. What about the other two? Well, the other two would dig down under the some those those people that already measured, they just went from the what do you call that stuff you put around the mulch. flowers, the mulch. You just held down to the mulch. But two of you said, well, he said the height of the fire hydrant. So you took your foot and you moved the dirt away 
until you get to the bottom, and instead of 27 and a half and 27 and 27, you got 28 and a quarter, and the other person got 28 and a half because of the different readings. So you would each give me pretty much a different reading based on the measurement, based on what you thought the measurement needed to be, or what you thought, or what you, how you read the actual measurement. So, what word did I use with all of that measurement? I can't write on the board. Measurement. So, anything measured is going to be what? Continuous. It's very difficult to write the mouse. Now tell me what's measured. Height. Height. Weight. Weight. Width. 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 Length. Volume. Get the get the point. Anything having to do with measurements is continuous because you might read two and three quarter cups. You may read two and a half cups. You can't be exact. Unless they come out with some machine that will only put out two and a half cups of milk. And then it would be, uh, well, would, would you get the same amount? Even machines have a mistake. Because sometimes you get M&Ms. Sometimes you get more red ones than you get green ones. Sometimes you get more brown ones and you get, they're supposed to put equal amount. But you don't get it that time. You don't get it every time. Then what does that leave with these guys? Well, let me give you another example. Let's say that we shut that gate up there and we shut this gate back here and there's no way to get on this campus unless you drive through the trees or through the field. And I tell you to go out and count the number of four-door cars in the parking lot. I didn't say four car, four door SUVs, did I? Did I say four door truck? My truck is a four door truck, but that don't count. That's not a car. I'm talking about a four door car. And I asked you to count. Would y'all give me the same? Would you give me the same numbers? Yep, yeah, because all of us know how to count, right? And there's no ambiguity in 10 and 10. So what would counting be? There you go. See how easy it is. See this working. And that would be a no. I think it's so sick of this. And see if I stop, it'll erase my recording. So counting, anything that you count, eggs, cars, redheads, brunettes, brown eyes, Marlboro Club, anything counted is discrete. Anything measured is continuous. And some of the some of the questions they ask you on the test is just guineas. The height of a tree. What is that? Continuous. It says height. The number of eggs in a carton counted because it's what? Number of eggs. So you need to write that down. You need to put height, weight, length, width, volume, all things measured here. Counted. Eggs. Uh, cars. What else do we count? can't find M&M's, Skittles, and a bag. If I put a bag of Skittles in here and ask each one of you to count the number of Skittles in that bag, y'all would give me the same answer. Unless somebody ate one. That's the difference between the Skittles. Now, if you want to use those definitions, go right ahead. Okay? And you feel good about yourself. Make sure what time it is. I don't want to keep you all Oh, we we here at 2.30, ain't we? Yeah. Got plenty of time. 
Uh, two fifteen. You gotta remind me two fifteen. I gotta pick up my son today because I can get him an extra day this week instead of I don't have him this week, so I get to pick him up this week one day. Okay, now we're not. Are we? Okay, now we're locked on page seventeen. Okay, this is good. Try typing in. Yeah, I got all kinds of things running up here. It's probably gonna blow up. Um, come on, you can do it. Let's just get out of this. Probably log me out. I love these things that log you out while you're using it. Okay. Bush is fall. All y'all get on to my labs plus, okay? Okay, thank you for interaction. Appreciate that. It's always nice to have a class to speak to. What is up with this computer? Okay, I'll type half of what you put in. Days when you shouldn't get up. Y'all sabotaged my computer during the break, didn't you? Y'all came in here and messed it up. like it just don't want to come up. What what's the deal? Is the internet down or what? Y'all aren't gonna talk to me. I don't know why I'm asking y'all. Let me use Google. Did y'all just see that all the things just went white? Let's see that at least at least go to, okay. That means that the internet's working. Let's see if the internet is working. Y'all settle down. There we go. We're back in business. Sorry about that. Sorry. I know y'all was hoping that it would fall apart, but I'm sorry. Now it takes me a half hour to get back. Where was I? One point what? Was it one point what page? 17. Thank you. Well, we were trying to get 18. We were trying, yeah, until it locked everything down. Okay, the only thing I'm going to give you on uh, levels of measurement is study the study 18, 19, and 20. But on the end of that, right here, you can just on the page, on the back of page 20, just go over it right here. Levels of measurement, a ratio, heights, lengths, distances. So ratios 
are what? Are continuous because it's heights, lengths, distances, volumes. What is that? Things that are what? Measure. Measure. Interval, that's body temperature, like the thermometer. Yeah, well, they don't ask it as continuous. I was just telling you that this one is. The interval level of measurement means that it has intervals. Like if you get a thermometer, it's base 10. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. And usually a thermometer goes up to, what, 150? Because you're dead by then. If you get up to 150, you're dead. Because we only get up to 102. All right? So it's got intervals. 10 interval sections. Uh, kind of like a, a ruler. A ruler would be intervals because it's every inch. Ordinal. What's the first three letters of ordinal? Ord, order, order, ordinal. They have to be in order. Rank, place, order. Rank, place, order. He came in first, second, and third. That's place. That would be ordinal. Ranks of colleges, ordinal. Anything in order would be ordinal. And nominal would be pretty much any of these. So, eye color. So, only thing I want you to know is the level of measurement and maybe a, an example. I don't usually put those on the test anyway. But that's on page 20. Make sure you know the difference between observational study and experiment. An observational study is where you just what? Watch it. You ever seen these videos of people with sleep apnea when they videotape them while they're sleeping? That's the observational study. I don't want to watch myself when I sleep. You don't tell them what kind of faces you make. And then you got all these wires hanging off your head. And, mm -mm. But that's an observational. In other words, you're watching somebody sleep. Now, what if I shocked them every five seconds with a with a cattle prod? Would that be observational or would that be experimental? When you start influencing the observation, that becomes experimental. When you have something to do with the outcome, that's experimental. What about giving, there's eight of y'all in here, giving four of you a blue pill and giving four of you a red pill and secretly telling the people that took the red pill that they're going to lose all kind of weight in the next month. They take that pill every day. But I don't tell the people with blue pill anything. They're both sugar pills. They're going to think that they lost weight. Yeah, and they're going to get it in their mind. They're going to watch what they eat and they're going to quit eating and they're going to lose weight. All right? Is that experimental or observational? Because I had something to do with 